News at Sunrise. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us on this Friday. First up, Oregon's governor has ordered all schools statewide to close starting Monday and lasting through Tuesday, March 31st. Governor Brown made this announcement late last night, so this is the state's latest attempt to stop the spread of coronavirus. All Oregon schools will be closed for two plus weeks starting Monday, but these districts we're going to show you right here. They actually are getting a jump start on this break. They're going to close today, so there they are on the screen right there. Tiger to Wallaton, Greater Albany, Lebanon Community Schools and Park Rose Elementary Schools here in Portland. Again, closing today before everyone closes on Monday. Park Rose High School and Middle School, we should point out, will have school today. Again, more on this statewide school closure from Tim Gordon in just a minute. Also a reminder that all public events larger than 250 people are also canceled. That includes the Shamrock Run and Kells Irish Festival this weekend. Let's hop across the Columbia now, talk about Clark County. It is also recommending that all large gatherings of 250 people or more be canceled. Now, if you want a full list of cancellations, because there are a lot of them and they keep coming in, you can text us and we'll send that list to you right now. Text closings to the number on your screen. That's 503-226-5111. We also have cancellations and closings rolling at the bottom of the screen right now. The fact of the matter is this, we are basically Brenda in uncharted territory, we right? Are. I mean, I talked to my kids, they uh, were talking about, hey dad, what was it like when you were in school? I said, I can tell you right now, we never had a situation like this when I was in school. So we're all trying to figure out really the best way to handle this right now. Yeah, we're gonna get through it, but we need to follow the recommendations from health officials. That is first and foremost important. We are gonna spend this morning's show and also our shows in the foreseeable future, sharing how the virus is affecting schools and your money and your community, your hospitals. But first, before we dive into that, we wanna send it over to the Weather Center, chat with Rod Hill about that Friday forecast. Good morning, Rod. Good morning, and you know, on top of all of the information that you're trying to get out to our viewers this morning, the weather forecast, especially tonight through Saturday morning, has a decent chance of at least seeing snow in the air, if not on the ground. And we'll be talking about that this morning. Look at this uh, ball of uh, cloudiness starting to come in. Clouds are thickening right now. Rain has started to move in Astoria. We're still dry in Portland, 40 degrees. I think we get at least through the heart of the 9 o'clock hour, so through the morning commute with either no precipitation in Portland or at the very most some just light traceable amounts. We will certainly see widespread rain in most areas before lunchtime and then fairly wet this afternoon. So at the bus stop, 39 out the door this morning, 44 at lunchtime, and then 44 degrees when the kids get out of school this afternoon. We will get into that weekend forecast coming up shortly. All right, Rod, we'll check back in with you in about eight minutes. Right now, we want to update you on the number of coronavirus cases here in Oregon. We're going to start in Lebanon. Six more people tested positive for coronavirus at Oregon Veterans Home, bringing the total number of cases there to eight. The Oregon Health Authority says infected people include one man between 55 and 74 and five other men who are over the age of 75. Two men over the age of 80 tested positive there on Wednesday. Again, all eight men are in isolation right now at that facility. Statewide, there are now 30 total cases across 11 different Oregon counties. Thankfully, there have been no coronavirus deaths so far here in Oregon. We do want to get back right now to the major story that broke late last night. Governor Kate Brown closing all Oregon schools. That closure will start Monday and it will last through the end of the month. So we know this is going to have a huge effect on a lot of you and your families. Tim Gordon is here this morning and Tim, less than 24 hours ago, the governor was explaining why she wasn't closing schools. Yeah, Brenda, this is something she clearly did not want to do, but in the end she felt that she had to. The governor says she had a lot of school officials telling her it was really impossible to operate because of staff shortages and student absences. Uh, the big closure announcement, it came late last night after a few big districts met and decided for themselves to shut down schools. Specifically, Tiger Tualatin schools and the Lake Oswego district had decided to close due to the coronavirus pandemic. We understand that this works a hardship. We also understand um, and want to be responsive to the, the plethora of emails um, and phone calls that our office has received relative to the safety and concern for children. This is going to work better for some families and not for some families. And we have a lot of compassion for the fact that this is going to disrupt lives. Yeah, very disruptive for sure. Schools are such a big part of our family lives. A lot of lower income families really rely on school meals as well. The governor has directed districts 
to make plans to continue food services for them. That's a really big issue for sure. Yeah, it is, but there's also the big issue of parents who need to work, and now they're stuck trying to find child care. Right, and you know, this is uh, something we don't have all the answers to. The governor didn't have big directives about that. Uh, for most parents, they're just gonna be scrambling. A lot yeah. of us will be. Now, the governor did say the early learning division, she wants them to work with districts and get child care started connect people, especially the most vulnerable families, so those young kids and vulnerable families hopefully be helped a little bit there. That this closure, though, does line up with spring break, right? Mm. So uh, schools yeah. will be closed next week, and then in Oregon, spring break was already scheduled the following week. So a couple of weeks off for the kids, again, starting Monday across the state. We're asking this morning, yeah. how are you going to handle these school closures when it comes to child care? So there's some choices you can see on the screen right here with today's morning poll. Number one, Maybe you have PTO time. Maybe you have time off that you can take from work. Number two, maybe you're working from home while the kids are home with you. Another option is friends or families. Maybe you're calling on them to help out right now. Whatever the choice may be, you can vote by going to KGW.com vote or by clicking on the vote tab in our KGW News app. And we're also hoping uh, to hear more from you about this very topic. So you can text us how you're handling the child care situation now with schools being closed. You can text us at 503-226-5111. So here's the concern behind the virus spreading and why leaders are taking such drastic measures. There are 688 ventilators at Oregon hospitals. If your life is on the line, you're going to need one of those. But if a thousand people suddenly need one, that is going to overwhelm the system. That's why the governor is banning gatherings and canceling school. Pat Doris had a chance to talk to a Multnomah County health official about the outlook for hospitals and also ask how many more of us could get sick? Uh, if I asked you again to look in your crystal ball, you've talked about the hospitals and will things get worse. What about the general population? Um, what we're hoping is that folks will consider even if they might be not at risk at all and they might assume that they would get the mild cold version of this in terms of their symptoms. Um, there's probably other folks in their lives who could get more sick. I know, but what I'm really asking is are a lot more of us going to get sick? A lot more of us may get sick. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And the cool thing is you're... I had a chance to follow up with Pat and kind of dive into some of these issues a little deeper, including the challenge that the healthcare system is facing in Oregon and Southwest Washington. We have that conversation for you coming up at 545. One of the other big concerns right now, of course, Brenda, and it's really a concern across the country, is the lack of available tests. But it is definitely a big concern here in Oregon because of the numbers we're going to show you right now. So right now, Oregon can process just 80 tests a day. Compare that to Washington, where right now they're able to process 1,000 tests a day. And in California, they can process over 7,000 tests every day. Obviously, California has a lot more people than we have here in Oregon, but there's no question Oregon is behind right now when it comes to testing. So Governor Brown says the state is working with the federal government to get more tests here in Oregon. And Senator Jeff Merkley was actually on MSNBC last night talking about how testing here in the U.S. is nowhere near the testing capabilities they have right now in South Korea. As of a couple days ago, we had tested five out of every million Americans, while South Korea had tested close to 4,000 out of every million South Koreans. And that lack of testing means we don't have a firm grip on the spread of this disease among the population. So a doctor with the National Institutes of Health, who also is a member of the Trump administration's coronavirus task force, he said tests are coming. He said widespread testing should be up and running soon, but he also didn't offer any hard numbers about what exactly that would mean. And if you're a sports fan, you have nothing to root for right now because basically all sporting events across the country have been canceled. The NBA and NHL seasons are on hold. March Madness isn't happening. Neither are the state basketball championships here in Oregon. Orlando Sanchez breaks it all down for us. Sports came to a stop in unprecedented fashion. The NBA suspended its season. Utah's Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell diagnosed with the coronavirus. The league says it will be at least 30 days until basketball is back. Major League Soccer on the same time frame, suspending its season. No matches for Soccer City and the Portland Timbers for at least 30 days. While the Portland Thorns canceled their preseason tournament. And the Portland Pilots will go dancing for the first time since 1997. The Portland Pilots' epic season is over. 
No madness this March on the court. The NCAA canceled the men's and women's basketball tournaments, as well as spring championships. No brackets to be busted, no ducks, no beavers, no Vikings. Oregon coach Kelly Graves tweeting their unfinished business will remain just that. KGW analyst John Canzano. For some of these athletes, they never got and they will never get the closure to what was their senior year and play that last game. There will be no state champion in Oregon for high school basketball's biggest classifications. The OSAA canceled its winter championships for boys and girls hoops, as well as dance and drill. Executive Director Peter Weber. It's disheartening. We are all parents and, and former players as well. It's, it's not a good feeling, but I think with this you know, rapidly evolving public health emergency that Everybody's just trying to make the, the best decisions that they can. It really mm. is strange because uh, you've got two big sports fans right here, right? I mean, basically yeah. my life is uh, revolves around who's playing tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Who can I watch tonight? And it's yeah. crazy. You go there now, it's like nobody. Nobody's playing tonight. Yeah. Even golf, they were kind of like the last sport standing in some cases. They played yesterday yes. at the Players' Championship, which is one of the biggest tournaments of the year. And now the PGA Tour, I heard this on the radio, uh, they said they would be shut down for three weeks. And if my, if my calendar is correct, that means they hope to come back the week before the Masters. So if they have to close the Masters, well, in golf, that's kind of like cl- – that's kind of like saying there's no Super Bowl. Well, if, if you could shut down yeah. March Madness, yeah. anything is on the table. I mean, anything is possible yeah. now. Absolutely, and it should be. I mean, it's that important. Yeah. Right. So trying to give our country the period of time it needs to get through this before things get, would get worse. Absolutely. Right? Yeah.